please help me welcome our teacher and leader, the messenger of Almighty God, the apostle, Pastor Gina Jennings. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Again, we thank and praise the one true living God for his divine wisdom and his perfect understanding of all things. We are indebted to him for being the true sender and teacher of all holy prophets and holy apostles. We thank him for the way of holiness to all of our wonderful brothers that minister in word and doctrine. I'm glad to see Pastor Campbell. I thank God for him being present to all of our guests, Brother Minister Went, who labor in the Houston area. All of you that are here, to all of our guests, <clears throat> to if I have any enemies that are here, <laughs> I thank God for you being here too. We had a beautiful meeting last night here in Dallas. Our first night, 80 souls went down in water. In the name of Jesus Christ. The first night, 80 in one night. And most men wouldn't baptize eight in 20 years. I've been saying moreover that this is not of us. It is all about God. In Dallas, if God be our helper, I done talked to my secretary this morning, starting this week, we will be searching to find a temporary location for Dallas so we can start <laughs> gathering you together. We already got Houston situated temporarily. Amen. And uh, Dallas, we're looking to do the same thing for you as well. Uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, we have to do that. I went to Milwaukee about a month or two ago. First trip, baptized 93 in the name of Jesus Christ. And we have to set up temporary place there. Went to Chicago and baptized a large crowd there. We have to open up the place there. So in all actuality, the type of message that God has given us, we are forced to absolutely open up a place every place we go, Amen. which is unheard of today. And people are surprised that so many people are coming to something that's not about prosperity. Houses, land, money. We are pointing you to God. You want to learn how to make money, go to college. You want to learn how to be saved, you come on here and I'll rumble with you with the Bible. Anything else is irrelevant. The materialistic prosperity message is a message of deep deception because it has too many people believing that right here is heaven, heaven on earth. This is not heaven. This is Satan's domain because the Bible calls Satan the God of this world. And this is why the devil has been, giving, been given so much power and leverage to deceive, trick, con, manipulate the simple. So it was a beautiful feeling to see so many men. And this is what shocks people. And this is one of the reasons why that when people first saw us, they thought I was a Muslim. Because I'm being a black man and was clean shaven and had a bow tie. And I often say, I had no idea a bow tie had so much power. And I was outspoken, so people thought I was a Muslim when they saw the women on one side and they saw all these men. We have more men than most people have women in churches. And people are shocked. Why is it that men is attractive to this hard preaching? <coughs> well, any man can tell you, if he lived a rough, sinful life, this sugar watered down cotton candy preaching cannot sustain him because even when he make it up in his mind to walk with God, he needs something stronger than that monkey on his back to fight for him. 
Are you listening? Holiness makes soldiers out of you. Amen. Make a real man out of you, because you're not a real man no way until you're a man of God. Amen. When I say man of God, I don't mean preacher. I simply mean a man who rendered his mind, soul, body, and spirit over to God. Amen. So don't brag about your manhood until you begin to obey God. Amen. Don't brag about your womanhood until you begin to obey God. All right, let's open up the book of pain. Amen. We did a live webcast last night, and we're doing a live webcast now. Amen. The message, the service from last night is already on YouTube, so you can see it. And I'm, it, you know, I find it very interesting, and it's funny now, how our enemies, you know, people subscribe to the truth of God that whenever we get to go and do a live webcast, I guess you get a ping. You get a notice. Do you know our enemies have subscribed? We have many enemies of the truth of God who subscribe to it. They get a ping, and then they watch it, and then cuss us out. Yeah. Every... Which one of my enemies back there? <laughs> How did you sneak in here? <laughs> so they watch us faithfully. They cuss us out faithfully. And then you have preachers who have hired their members. Some preachers have pimped their members out so they can surf internet and try to fish for followers of the truth of God to try to encourage them to look at their preacher, whoever he, she, or it may be. We have a good sound message. There's no fluctuating in the message. It don't go to the left nor to the right. That's right. We believe in the God of Abraham. That's right. We, in fact, we serve the same God that Abraham served. That's right. And Abraham only served one. Not two, not three, one. And this is why you often hear us say, and many of our ministers say in our opening statement, that we bear witness there is no God but one. And when many people heard our opening remarks like that, some got so angry and said, that man is just a Muslim in disguise. <laughs> no, I'm not a Muslim at all. Some thought I used to be a Muslim and was converted. I never was a Muslim. I came up in what was called apples and stalics. That's what I came up in. They taught about the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ and taught about the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue and taught that women couldn't preach and taught that Jesus Christ was God. Many couldn't explain it, as my brother Went mentioned. Even the preacher that I used to was under, he would tell you there's one God and Jesus Christ was God, but he couldn't really break it down and analyze it. And then as he got older, even he began to decline on the stand that he used to have. Isn't it strange that now a lot of the older brothers and sisters that used to reprimand us as young people about doing the will of God and following the teachings of God, now many of them are worse than the young people who want to do what they want to do. The truth of God is not turning left or right. We are stationary, right. planted in the scriptures. Right. We're not moving for money. We're not moving for fame. You can't offer me nothing that have not already been offered. I have said on many programs, we have been offered church organizations by other bishops. Bishops are still writing us, asking me what I consider taking over their quote-unquote movement whether four churches or 40 churches. And I tell them, I don't mind taking it over if that's what you want, but I won't subject myself to strings being attached. In other words, if I come in there, I'm coming in with Bible. And whoever's in the way, may the Lord have mercy on you. That's right. I don't care nothing about your fame, your position, your family your wife, your son, your daughter, 
when it comes to the Bible, everybody get hit. Everybody. Oh, you didn't know that? That's right. Oh, yes, I'll take the Bible, beat your husband, beat your wife, knock over your son, and crush your daughter. That's right. Amen. I take the Bible and beat your grandfather and work on your grandmama. That's right. I do all that with the Bible because the Bible don't have no respect to person. That's right. This church, it's time now that this church favoritism has to stop. And this is what you have in a lot of churches where the preacher have family favoritism. I don't favor nobody but God. Are you getting what I'm telling you? And God don't favor me that he's going to go around the Bible to condone me. That Bible hits me. And when that Bible hits me, I have to tap out. When God take the scripture and put me in that submission hole, I'm tapping out. Why? I want to be saved. That's right. I don't want to go to hell. That's right. All right, Williams, open your Bible anywhere. And let's go to work because mm -hmm. it's all good. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4. Follow me in your Bible. If anybody get upset, good. Come on back at 5 o'clock this evening. Amen. All right, get this. 1 Timothy chapter 4, we're at the first verse. Follow me. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That start off sounding wonderful. Amen. Who's speaking? The Spirit. Speaking. Hold it. The Spirit. Let's establish who the Spirit is. In John chapter 4 and verse 24. Hallelujah to God. Amen. John 4, 24 says. God is a spirit. And what did Timothy say? For the Spirit, now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That means God is talking. That's right. Hallelujah. God is talking. That's right. That's right. Give me the book of Titus. Mm-hmm. Let's see how God manifests his word. In the book of Titus chapter 1. I want to show us how God talked. In the book of Titus chapter 1 and at verse 3. Follow me. But hath in due times. I, I see you choking up over there. Let me <coughs> yeah, just a open water. up a bottle of water for you. If I was a false prophet, that would be liquor, you know. <laughs> But I'm not a false prophet, so you're, I can't give you no liquor. You're not a false prophet. Though. You can't go back to your Trinitarian, your Trinitarian no. day. <laughs> no. Come on, drink your water, flush it down, get the devil out of you. Come on. <laughs> Come on, loosen up. Are you good? <laughs> yes, yes, sir. <laughs> All right, come on, what is it now? Titus chapter 1, and we're at verse 3. I want to show us how God get his word over. But hath in due times. Hath in due times. Manifested his word. How do God get his word over to the people? Through preaching. Amen. How do God get his word over? Through preaching. So then, no man is preaching unless mm -hmm. he preached the word. That's right. Opinion, philosophy, ideology has a good sound. Mm -hmm. In fact, Brother Solomon says this. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, and the end thereof are the ways of death. A lot of people come to church to get a good feeling. Church is not supposed to be aimed at making you feel good. Church is supposed to be aimed to teach you how to do good. That's right. You can feel good over a lie. Yeah. I mean, lies can make you feel good. In fact, sin can make you feel good. That's right. I'm pretty sure that everyone can say amen. Amen. I mean, there's certain sin that will put a, fat, a smile on your face. It may take hours and days and weeks. For it to come off right. until the word of God get a hold of you. That's right. If God make manifest his word through preaching, through preaching, that also verifies that God do not have a lot of preachers. That's right. Nowhere in the Bible does it teach us that the Lord have many preachers. No. The Bible teaches us many false prophets, false prophets shall come. That's right. And they shall deceive many. many. All of us, if we look at our past, 
and came up in some type of church, we can see how many of the churches, in fact, and maybe some of the churches we were in, have strayed so far away from the Bible until the church don't even look like a house of God. That's right. And this is why the sinners have made mockery about religion. And even some sinners that watch the truth of God have told me, I mean gangbangers. I've met men from the Bloods. I've met men from the Crips. I've met men from the Gangster Disciples. Even some have came to some of the meetings and have told me, Pastor Jennings, you know, we don't do that church thing. But we do know when we are ready to get right and do that church thing, you're the only fellow we'll come to because you tell it the way it is. And we from the street, you can't play with us from the street. That's right. And this is what I mean, how a hard, cold sinner cannot sustain trying to live right following these sugar daddy preachers who just make you feel good and do you on your way to hell with a good feeling. That's right. That's right. If you want to be a man, you must be prepared to hear a message that makes you a man. That's right. We don't offer you sugar here. No. Because our Lord says, salt is good. Salt is good. And if the salt loses savior, wherein shall it be seasoned? So it is time for, and I'm grateful for the thousands of testimonies we get for people whose eyes have came open, testimony after testimony, put down the liquor bottle because of the message, stop smoking, stop drinking, stop fornicating, stop gambling, stop partying, stop clubbing. I got an email from a stripper. She said she heard me in the most unlikely place. Mm. And then she put a, a emoji of a smile. She said, I heard you in my strip club. Oh. Even, even I was at the letter. I was like, say what? <laughs> and then she described how she heard me. She said after she was done her thing, whatever it was, she went back in her dressing room. And her boyfriend was in there and had me on the phone. Wow. And here I am on the phone in the dressing room preaching about the strip club and how, because you heard me talk about it on the telecast, how I don't understand how these men can go to strip clubs. And all a woman did was came down a pole, walked on her hands and knees, and gave you a lap dance, and now you broke. That's right. You don't work all week. Now you don't have no money to buy your children, no food. You can't put no clothes and no food to your wife or your kids. And he was listening to this. And she said, the moment I came in, he just stood up, took the phone, and put it in my face. <laughs> and I'm like, well, who is this? And she said, he just kept pointing in it. You need to listen to this. <laughs> listen to this. And as a result of that message, she said she came out of the strip club the same day and never went back. Wonderful. 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 Hallelujah. This message shows you the reality of self. That's right. And this is why the scripture says about the Bible, as beholding yourself into a glass. See, there are some mirrors that show you what you're not. Yeah. See, sometimes when a person wants to believe they lost weight, they get a slim, narrow mirror. Yeah. <laughs> and they say, oh, I'm losing. <laughs> a mirror lying on you. That's right. The Bible shows us the truth about us. And if we look at ourselves sincerely, 
We may not like all what we see. For if any be a hearer of the word. Listen. In the book of St. James, chapter 1 and at verse 23. All right. For if any be a hearer of the word. If any be a hearer of the word. And not a doer. And don't want to do it. He is like unto a man beholding his natural like face. unto a man. Beholding his natural face. Beholding his natural face. In a glass. In a glass or in glass. A mirror. For he beholdeth himself. He behold himself. And goeth his way. And go his way. And straightway forgetteth what manner of man he, he was. Now, we are holding the mirror of scripture in your face. That's right. Telling you what you are, what you want to be, what you could be, how God wants you to be, and what Satan is trying to get you not to be. See, Satan wants to hold you hostage That's right. in sin. Make you believe you can't stop drinking, you can't stop smoking, you can't stop partying. And then the devil makes you look at how I sound and not what I say. That's right. And when the devil makes you focus on how I sound right then, he sound mean. He ain't loving. He, he don't sound loving. Ignore how I sound. And pay attention to what we're telling you because what we're telling you will save your life. That's right. Your beauty won't save you. No. Face that fact. No. Beautiful women are dead now. That's right. Your money won't save you. That's Millionaires right. die all the time. That's right. Favor is deceitful. Listen. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, and at verse 30. What is it? Favor is deceitful. Favor is deceitful. And beauty is vain. Beauty is what? Beauty is vain. Your beauty don't mean nothing. It's only temporarily. That's right. Well, before long, you'll be planted in the dust, and those eyes that used to wink at men and women will fall out of socket. That's right. Your mouth that used to massage another man's mouth will drop open, and a rat will be sitting in your throat. That's right. Your belly that used to lay flat and a man lay on top of you will burst open and maggots will come out. That's right. Your hands that used to have leaves stick on nails yeah. will be covered with worm and spiders. That's right. That's Are you right. getting what I'm telling you? For when a man is dead. Listen. Now in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and at verse 11. My God, that water done you good, didn't it? <laughs> when a man is dead. He shall inherit creeping things. Texas, Dallas, mm -hmm. the purpose of scripture mm -hmm. is to teach you how to get right in this life and also instruct you how to make preparations for the life to come. That's right. Because I don't care of your nationality, the color of your skin, religions that's catered to white, religions that cater to black, religions that cater to one nationality is a cheap weak religion because they're more focused on your color but not teaching you how to pursue God. That's right. Black man, white man, brown man, yellow man, it's time to pursue God. That's now right. some of you so dumb and ignorant and full of your father, the devil out of hell, hmm. you go to churches where only white folk is. And then some of you are so dumb, you go to church where there's only black folk. I want to be with my own kind. <laughs> well, right. if you're a sinner, you're always your own kind. That's right. I don't care if you're black as street or white as snow. That's if right. you're a sinner, you are with your own kind. Oh, yeah. There are two kinds of people in the earth. The sinner and the saint. That's right. The holy and the unholy. The righteous and the unrighteous. Now you judge. Who are you going to serve? It is written, if God be God, serve him. And if the devil or Baal be God, serve him. So when you die, black, white, brown, and yellow, red folk, the worm's going to cover your body. And I keep telling people moreover, Hebrew Israelites keep writing me once in a while. All of them not bad. I have some very uh, polite and respectful Hebrew <laughs> Israelites that watch the program and even encourage their followers to watch it. In fact, we baptized some in Milwaukee. Amen. Some Hebrew Israelites came in and 
and heard the word of God and went down in the water. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. And then there are some that says, I'm an Uncle, Uncle Tom <laughs> because I won't tell black folk they are the original people of Israel. Listen to the old troublemaker now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't give two cents. What race descended from Israel? Right. You know what Israel got to do? Mm -hmm. Give me Acts 2.38 and let's see what Peter said. What Israel got to do and how much of Israel got to do it? Acts chapter 2, we'll start at verse 37. Now, uh, what is that? Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And said what? And said unto Peter the and Bible to the Bible said, let all the house of Israel, of Israel know assuredly, know assuredly that God, hath, that made that God same hath made that same Jesus whom you crucified, yeah. both Lord and Christ. and Christ. All Israel got to do it. That's right. Oh, listen, All I don't Israel. care if you're so black, you look like a period on the end of a sentence. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Huh? That's right. Amen. So black, you look like a period on the end of a sentence. That's black, brother. That's black. Huh? <laughs> Amen. A period wearing a suit. <laughs> Amen. You get what I'm telling you? Therefore, therefore, let all the house of Israel, let every Israelite know, assuredly, I want you to know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus. What you mean, Pastor Jennings, that Yahweh have made that same Yahushua HaMashiach, both Lord and Christ. and Christ. Now when they heard this, now this is what every Israelite got to do when you hear this. They were pricked in their heart. Your heart might as well get ready to break down and melt. And said unto Peter and, and, and to, the, to rest Peter the, and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What should all the Hebrew Israelites do? Then Peter said unto I them, want this to be good in case I got any black brothers or white brothers here who so caught up in your piece of no good flesh. That's right. When you scrub that old black body, there's a ring in your tub. Amen. When you scrub that white body, there's a ring in your tub. That's right. When you go too long without washing, the black man stink. Amen. White man stink. Amen. And when the black and white go down in the grave, I haven't heard of a worm that's prejudice. That's right. There ain't no worm for whites only. No. Am I right? No. There are no worms, blacks only. Amen. I want to break down this sick prejudice and racism. And yes, you'd be sir. surprised yes, how many so-called churches are caught up in this racism. And a lot of them claim they're Pentecostals. That's right. Pentecostals, I said. That's right. You bunch of bigots. Bigots. You bunch of Bible-carrying, Cadillac-driving bigots. That's right. I take the word of God and knock that so-called bigotry back to hell from where it come from, Amen. including the bishop that promotes it. That's right. And that goes for anybody here or even visitors that here. If you go to a church that promote the color of your skin and yet don't promote the standard in the will of God, you and your church are servants of hell. That's right. Amen. Oh, well, we're glad we got that over. Now, let's come on back to the Bible. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Repent. And be baptized. Hallelujah. Take God. Amen. All right, let's go back to where we son. Everybody all right? Amen. Don't lie. Tell the truth now. <laughs> all right, William, come on. Now the Spirit. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Speaketh expressly. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. You can't depart from something you never was in. No. Is that the truth? That's right. You can't leave something you never was in. That's right. There's only one faith. One faith. You'll find that one in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4, begin at verse 4. Verse 4. Give me Ephesians 4 and 4. Listen. Mm -hmm. There is one body. That means one church. Mm -hmm. One body. One body means one people, and, one church. That's right. And, and one spirit. Uh oh. Mm. And God is that spirit. That's right. There's one church, one spirit. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. What else, son? One Lord. Three. One Lord. Four. One Lord. I know you're glad to read that, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> How many here used to be Trinitarians? Raise your hand. Good gracious. <laughs> used to be Trinitarians. You might as well raise your hand and join them. <laughs> Everybody knows it, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be slick and live it down, you know. <laughs> One Lord. One Lord. All my Cameron members Trinitarian because they were Catholics. That's right. 
Yeah, they were captive. They was taught that, you know, the Father is here and the Son is here and the Holy Ghost was flying around as a white bird, a little pigeon. Uh-huh. Wasn't for long all the cameramen repenting of their sins went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. One Lord. One Lord. And what else? One faith. Hold it. One faith means one belief. And I can never preach this enough. Look at the variety of religious beliefs in one neighborhood, in one community, in one state, in one city, in one country. And here it is, the book plainly says, one faith. One faith. Your father can be one faith. Your mother is another faith. Your son is another faith. Your daughter is another faith. Here's the father is a Muslim. The wife is a Jehovah Witness. The, the son is a Catholic. The uh, daughter is Protestant and pregnant, holding a Hebrew Israelite. <laughs> That's right. One faith. One faith. And don't you dare insult my intelligence by telling me it don't matter what you believe, long as you all one down inside. That's your fool opinion. That's right. If it don't matter what you believe, then God would not have told us what to believe. That's right. God told us what to believe. to believe. And if God told us what to believe and God told us what to be, everybody in the religion might as well get off the bus. That's right. Get off. That's right. Only thing should be on the bus is holy. Amen. A holy bus, holy driver, Amen. holy passenger. Pay, pay a holy car fare. <laughs> That's, right. Uh, That's right. Nothing but holy. One Lord. One Lord. One faith. One belief. One baptism. And one baptism. One God. What? One God. You wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. You're stepping in a dangerous area. <laughs> Amen. How many gods? One God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's so plain. Yeah. That's so plain. One God. One God. And Father. And he, the same one God is the Father. Of all. Of all. He's the Father, me. He's the creator of everything. Who is above all. He's superior to everything. And through all. And he works through. And in you all. And in you all. All right, go back to the book of Timothy. Let's itemize what the Spirit said. Back in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. All right. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the last days. That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. All right, Dallas, Texas, let us look at what we departed from. Many of us came out of all kind of religions, be it Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran. Catholic, Mormon, Muslim, Protestant, Apostolics, Christian scientists, Scientology, Mormon, Hinduism, Voodoo, Hoodoo, you do. <laughs> hey, it may sound funny, but you know, in certain areas, Voodoo is a religion. That's right. I have a large uh, viewing audience in Haiti, a lot of Haitian viewers. And in Haiti, Voodoo is a religious practice. Amen. It isn't a godly practice. It's a religious practice. But why would you say it, Pastor Jen, it is not a religious or godly practice? Our ancestors, this is another thing about our black brothers and sisters, God help your heart. They're always pointing me to our ancestors. I respect our ancestors. But even many thousands of our ancestors was lied to and had religious deception. That's right. So I don't rely on ancestors. I rely on God. That's right. Why? God never made a mistake. God never erred. And God never was deceived by anyone nor anything. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. That's right. God Impotable, God perfect, God flawless, God without error, God who makes no mistake, God is not begotten, God is not a painting on your wall. That's right. God has no beginning, God has no ending, God always was, God always has been, God is of no nationality. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. That's right. So these religions who try to make God cheap, mm. like your foolish way of thinking, yeah. a black God, yeah. a white God. That's right. That's right. They try to make God 
associated with their race to give their race some form of mental and emotional and spiritual supremacy. God that made the world. Listen. In the book of Acts chapter 17 and at verse 24. What is it? God that made the world. God that made the world. And all things therein. What is it? Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, mm -hmm. dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything. You see, God made everything. That's right. My white brothers, the nation of Islam said you came from a laboratory. Mm. They said there was a big head scientist by the name of Yakub. And Yakub had supposed to have been shaped like the golden arches of McDonald's. And I remember watching a documentary on YouTube some months ago, a whole documentary talking about Yakub origin. So I had no idea that this Yakub supposed to be a alien. Yakub supposed to came from a race of aliens My Lord. whose spaceship supposed to be somewhere in the center of the earth. My Lord. And when little Yakub grew up, they supposed to make fun of him because of the shape of his head supposed to be shaped like a heart. My Lord, my but Yakub supposed to have been a master in science. Mm. So Yakub supposed to have abstract from the black brothers what is called the brown germ. My Lord. Taken from the black man, the brown germ, then he supposed to went to the laboratory with the brown germ and make another race. My Lord. So this is what Yakub supposed to have done. Come here, my brother on the end with the glasses. Come here, brother. You, you stand right here, brother. What's your name, brother? Paul. Brother Paul. I can remember that. Stand right here, Paul. Uh, my next brother here. Come on, brother. You stand next to Paul. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My next brother here. What's your name again, brother? Chapman. Brother Chapman. You stand next. My brother, what's your name? Jonathan. Brother Jonathan, stand next to Chapman. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Uh, my brother here. What's your name, brother? Jamie. Brother Jamie. Come on, you stand next to Brother Jonathan. My brother here. What's your name? Donnie. Donnie. Brother Donnie. 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 Stand next to him. Now. Oh, praise be to God. <laughs> Yakub, the big head scientist, supposed to took the brown germ from the black man. In the laboratory, he's supposed to start grafting. And each man that he would graft, supposed to got lighter, and then lighter, and then lighter, and then the last man that supposed to have been grafted was so-called white man. Lord. Now, according to the teachings of the nation of Islam, Adam was the first white man. And yet, Adam's body came from the dirt of Africa. That's right. Let's get Bible for this. That's right. All right, brothers, the grafting is over. <laughs> Amen. Let me show you where the Garden of Eden was located. In the book of Genesis chapter 2, and we'll start reading at verse 10. Listen. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. The Bible's going to describe what waters surrounded the Garden of Eden. That's right. Listen. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And what? And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Yes. The name of the first is Pison. The name of the first river that watered the garden was Pison. That is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah. And what else? Where there is gold. Where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is bdellium and the ox stone. And? And the name of the second river is Gihon. The name of the second river that watered the garden was Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. It's the same river that compassed the land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is... And the name of the third river is what? Is Hidekiel. Is Hidekiel. That is it which goes that toward the east of is Assyria. It which go to the east of where? Of Assyria. Of Assyria. And the fourth river... And the fourth river... Is Euphrates. Oh, that's Africa. That's right. 
And the Lord God took the and man. The Lord took the man and put him and put him into the garden of Eden. The Lord put the man in the garden of Eden that was in Africa. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's Bible. <laughs> That's Bible. That's not racism. That's no. Bible. That's Bible. Well, Pastor Jennings, where the white man come from? Mm -hmm. He come from the black man. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. My white brother's young original mother is a black woman. That's right. Well, who is she? The Bible said Eve is the mother of all oh, living. Oh, That's why I call white folk my brothers and sisters, because we got the same mother and the same father, father, because Adam was the first father. That's right. Only God can create a beautiful flower garden like we have today. Black, white, brown, yellow, red. Yeah. Only God can do this. Only God. And then tell everybody of every race, you got to obey him. That's right. <laughs> you got to obey him. Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Acts 17 and at verse 26. Acts 17, 26. Says, and, and hath made of one blood. Yeah, made of one blood. All nations of men. What is the one blood that all men are made of? You're born in the world with sin, sin. shaped into iniquity, fashioned in lust. And all of us are contaminated or were contaminated by the failure, the transgression, the sins of the first father, Adam. That's right. And in order to get out, and our one blood was tainted with his sin. That's why God instituted the new birth to get rid of the tarnish yeah. out of our sins. Someone said, well, I didn't do the sin that Adam done. I just inherited, so why do I got to repent? You're not repenting for the sins of Adam. You're repenting for your sins. That's right. And the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ wash away all sins. All sins. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Now the Spirit. Speak is expressed. Now God speaketh expressly. Express mm -hmm. himself. How do God express himself? He make manifest his word through preaching. Through preaching. Through preaching. God do not express himself in any manner where lies is preached. No. No. Because God is not a liar. That's right. When someone make the Godhead more than one, God is not exp right. expresses himself. No. So you got to remember, it says the Spirit speaketh expressly. Speaketh expressly. Mm -hmm. And God don't lie. That's right. God don't mislead. That's right. God don't teach you wrong. That's right. God don't give you misinformation. Mm -hmm. Someone say, well, Pastor Jennings, I read history. Good. Good. History is good yeah. when it don't contradict God. That's right. Did you hear what I said? That's right. History is good when it don't contradict God. That's one of the dangers of Google. That's true. And internet. Right. There's a lot of lies a lot over of internet. Lies. Oh, yeah. And a lot of us are believing and preaching things that's to no profit based upon internet information, failing to realize the information on internet is the study of some man. Yeah. And it's just posted based upon men study. That's right. People write me, Pastor Jennings, I believe the earth is flat. Who cares? Find the edge and walk off. <laughs> if the earth is flat, it's going to oh, pass away anyway. anyway. I'm going to waste my time on arguing you about the shape of the earth. If it's flat, it's going to pass away. Square, pass away. Rectangle, pass away. The Bible says heaven and earth, earth pass shall away. pass away with a great noise. That's right. Hmm. Waste your time over some stupidity. Flat earth. <coughs> Find the edge and walk off. That's right. And see, can you land where there's water and be baptized Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ? Amen. Hallelujah. Do you get what I'm telling you? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit? Praise the name of God. Amen. What is it, son? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith. What are they doing? Giving heed to seducing spirits. And what's connected to that seducing spirit? And doctrines of devils. Hold it. Devils. Seduce. Let's define what is seducing. seducing. When you are seduced, you're conned, manipulated, tricked, bamboozled, led astray. 
A seducing spirit comes from the pulpit that manipulate, that con, yeah. that calls sincere people to swerve. That's right. As the Apostle Paul teaches, right. they swerved away mm -hmm. from God's word. In the it book doesn't matter if you're sincere. If you follow a seducing spirit, He's liable to manipulate your sincerity and make it work to his advantage and your disadvantage. Now in 1 Timothy chapter 1, we'll First start Timothy at verse 5. 1 Timothy chapter 1, begin at verse 5. Now the Follow end, me. 1 Timothy 1 and verse 5. Has what? Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart. Yes. And of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Mm -hmm. From which some, having swerved, have Wait turned aside. Wait a minute. Amen. Establish what it is again now. From which some have... No, let's go back to what it is. Back at verse 5. Listen, now I want everyone to listen closely because I want you to pay attention mm -hmm. what the Bible's telling you the people swerved from. That's right. Are you listening? That's All right. right. Now, the end of the commandment... The end of the commandment... Is charity out of a pure heart. Love thy neighbor as thine self. And of a good conscience. Have a good conscience. And of faith... Believe God. Unfeigned. Unmovable. From which... Unfeigned, not foreign, unmovable, not trying to believe in something else in the same manner that you believe in God. That's right. Uh -huh. From which From some these things, some, some having swerved. Hold it. Let's, let's, let's hold it right there. Amen. Everybody all right? Amen. Let's look at the term swerve. Swerve. When you're driving, sometimes a thing pop up unexpectedly. You go, whoa, you got to turn. Well, this is what have happened in religion. So many things pop up that you may find yourself have to swerve around to avoid hell. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Satan bring many beliefs up in fathers and mothers and brothers and uncles and relatives. And this is where you need to disassociate yourself from believing something is true because your mama said it. Yeah. Your daddy said it. Yeah. Relatives and God are not the same. That's right. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? Jesus said, who is my mother, my mother, sister, and brother, but he that do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same as my mother, sister, and brother. If your father is following the word of God, man, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. If your mother is following the word of God, that's beautiful. That's right. If your brother and sister, the relatives, are following the word of God, that's beautiful. But if they're not careful, the devil can trick and deceive them as well. That's right. That's right. This is why we can never approach our spiritual walk based upon our own opinions, our own feelings, our own emotion, and our own idea, and our own philosophy. Yeah. This is why I tell people never approach the Bible and say, well, this is what I think. We don't care what you think. That's right. This is how I feel. We don't care how you feel. Right. Don't say, well, Pastor Jennings, that's rude. Give me Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 55. Oh, you already there, aren't you? Amen. Come on, son. Isaiah 55 and at verse 8. All right. For my thought. God talking. My Give thought. Give Captain verse again. Isaiah chapter 55. We'll start at verse 7. You start there then. Let the wicked forsake his way. Wait a minute. What should Dallas do? Let the wicked forsake his way. What all the viewing orders need to do? Let the wicked forsake his way. You that are writing me, telling me, well, Pastor Jennings, you won't take my opinion. I most certainly won't. That's right. Your opinion don't mean nothing to me. That's Pastor right. Pastor Jennings, my spirit don't agree with you. I know it don't. Your spirit is not designed to agree with me. You That's need right. the Holy Ghost. Amen. You need God's spirit. Amen. And God's spirit is not your spirit. That's right. Them that is of God, Jesus, speak plain. Yeah. My sheep will hear my voice. And if you got sheep and got the right spirit and hear the word of God, even if it condemns you and make you angry, you're going to say amen. That's right. That's right. If it hurts your feelings, you got to say amen. amen. If it makes your mother mad, you got to say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory right. to God. That's right. Hey, what do you say, son? Let the wicked forsake his Let way. Let the wicked, blessed be the name of God. Forsake his forsake way. Forsake wicked. And the God says to you, wicked. forsake his your way. way. That his means way. stop it. That's right. Stop this cheap prosperity lies. That's right. 
Stop this hustling the people out of their money. Let the preachers get a job and go to work or let them die and go to hell. Amen. The Bible said if you don't work, you don't eat. That's right. I got a job. Yeah. I got seven kids. Oh, yeah. Four boys whose stomachs are like bottomless pits. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God have never set the church up to make pastors rich. No. Make bishops rich. No. Your preacher want a yacht? Let him get a job and go buy it himself. That's right. Your preacher want a Bentley? Let him get a job and go buy it himself. That's right. Your preacher want a plane? Let him go out and sell ice cream and buy it himself. Amen. Amen. You give these bums your money, they ride in a jet that you never get a chance to ride in. That's true. That's true. Stop sending your preacher children to school. Yeah. If you got money to send your bishop children to the best schools, why don't you send your children to the same school? That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. Amen. Preachers been telling this lie for years. God's men supposed to have the best. When you have God, you got the best. Amen. If I don't have a mansion, that don't mean I'm poor. That's right. If I don't have a Maybach, that don't mean I'm poor. That's right. If I only have one suit, that don't mean I'm poor. Amen. The greatest wealth is God himself. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Hallelujah. What did he say? Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the wicked to my gangbangers mm -hmm. and to my pole dancers in your club. Amen and wig wearers and toupee wearers, Amen. fake eyelash blinkers. That's right. Am I right? That's right. Lipstick wearing, earrings wearers, and nose jewel wearers, and, and got your breasts all piercing, navel piercing, you men that want to pierce your lower nature. Yeah. Amen. What's the matter with people? You men that want to wear dresses and you women that want to wear half-naked, skin-tight jeans and your behind is hanging out of them. Go ahead. Talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Let the wicked, I let, have. Let the wicked forsake his ways. Forsake his ways. And the unrighteous man. And the unrighteous man. His thoughts. What? Let, and, let, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let the unrighteous man do what? Let the wicked forsake his way. And? And the unrighteous man his thoughts. Listen, brother. <laughs> when you want to wear a dress, that's an unrighteous thought. That's an unrighteous right. I was in Houston, and me and the brothers after one service, I think it was Saturday night service, the first service, went back to the hotel. When they dropped me off, here we Walking me up to the room, but we was in the lobby waiting for the elevator to come down. There was a group of young men, young girls, and young men. And there was some young white brothers. They all had on navy blue suits and whatnot. Pretty clean. Mm -hmm. You know, I looked at the suit. I said, hey, Ricky, you young captain, pretty clean. He said, yeah. But then I looked down to the feet. <laughs> there. there was one young brother had on loafers, and there was two that had on sparkled female pumps. A two-piece suit, shirt, necktie with pumps. <laughs> now, this is how bad the Christian, so-called Christian world have gotten. They are so mentally warped until they say, it doesn't matter. Why would you speak against it? That's not loving. No, a man in pumps is not loving. No. I mean, what it look like Pastor Jennings come down here in Dallas? Oh. <laughs> and here we come through the door. Somebody said, oh, he got a decent suit on. And then you don't see my shoes till I come up here. Right. And I got heels all up here. Amen. <laughs> my brother said he ain't coming. <laughs> Why? You from the hood, ain't you? <laughs> but our men are so weak today. Oh, yeah. You follow anything. That's right. 
And that's why a lot of women don't respect you as a man because you follow every piece of weak trash. That's right. That rob you of your manhood. That's right. You thank your man because you knock up a bunch of women and make a bunch of babies and you too cheap and lazy and worthless to take care of any of the babies you got? Amen. Amen. You ain't a man based upon your performance in bed. That's right. Roaches perform. That's right. That's why it's hard to get rid of them. That's right. You turn the lights on, roaches run. <laughs> Amen. Are you listening? Amen. So this is why God made me a tough, hard, rugged, rigid preacher. That's right. Who loved the world. That's right. And who sent to the world to turn the world back to him. That's it. You know, one scripture, the Lord says, return unto me. Amen. You can't return unless you left. That's right. Return. God want everybody under the sun to return to him. Come back to him. And when you come back to him, you're not coming to Christianity. No. I said when you come back to God, you're not coming to Christianity. That's right. There is no religion in the history of the Bible called Christianity. No. There was first called Christians in a place called Antioch. Antioch. But Jesus never called his own followers Christians, no. nor did he call his teaching Christianity. That's right. That's why I tell the world, come on back to Bible. That's right. Come on back to Bible. Mm -hmm. I had a Lutheran minister write me in told me, he said, he called me Reverend Genesis, he didn't know no better. He said, Reverend, I find your speeches very interesting. And he said, and I heard you speak against the Lutheran church. What do you have against Lutheran? How many here was a Lutheran? Anytime, raise your hand. Oh, good, you done good. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. Hmm. The word Lutheran was the name of a man. His name was Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King. Right. Martin Luther King mother named him after Martin Luther. Martin Luther came from the Catholic Church and had a gripe with certain religious practices and beliefs of the Catholic Church. And as a result of such, he broke off from the Catholic Church and started his own religion named after him Lutherans. So every Lutheran church is named after Martin Luther. So their religion started by a cheap, weak man. That's right. Are you listening to me? Amen. This is why I'm trying so hard to show you stop going along to get along and understand the contents of scriptures. How many for years used to tell people your religion was Christianity? Tell the truth. Raise your hand. That's practically everybody. Christianity, such a term, such a religion, it never been in the Bible. The word Christian, which is a person who strives to live like Christ, that been in the Bible. Until Peter said, if one suffer as a Christian, as a Christian. meaning suffer like Jesus. That's right. That's right. Christian person. Christianity was abstracted from the word or the title Christ. Christ, Christians, mean followers of Christ, but Christianity is supposed to be the name of the religion that Christ started. Liar! That's right. Liar! Liar. Let me make another example. There was a man in the Bible named John the Baptist. His religion wasn't Baptist. The word Baptist means baptizer. His occupation was baptizer. So John plainly said, I'm not the light. I'm not the light. But I come to bear witness of the light. Then he preached Jesus. He said, one come after me, 
He's mightier than I who shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. The fan is in his hand. And he shall thoroughly purge his floor. Hold it. What do you mean he going to thoroughly purge his floor? Hold it right there. In most churches, when they down there praying, what they call a tarry service, people be spitting, foaming at the mouth like mad cow syndrome. <laughs> and the bishops have told them the Lord is purging you because he said he's going to thoroughly purge his floor. That's a mighty dumb preacher. <laughs> the word purge don't mean spit. Purge means to purify or clean. Jesus said you're clean through the word that I speak unto you. And the apostle says, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth. So why did Jesus said he shall thoroughly purge his floor? The floor of Jesus are the people because the floor is beneath you. We are beneath God. So God will purge us, cleanse us. How? Through God everlasting word. That's right. Thoroughly purge his floor means thoroughly clean his people. Not you somewhere in some church praying, spit, hanging down your mouth like a handkerchief. People got to come wipe your mouth. Wipe your own nasty mouth. That's right. Am I right, I said? That's right. Let the wicked forsake his way. You see, I can, I can preach this strong and boldly because years ago when I was younger, I was under the same uh, illusion of such foolish teaching. Right. When I came up in falsehood, the preacher used to tell the people, oh, don't wipe the people's mouth when they spitting. God is getting the sin out of them. Mm. Listen, Jack, if spitting get the sin out of you, then you shouldn't get upset when somebody spit in your face. <laughs> when somebody spit in your face, I mean bring it deep. <laughs> and they lay it to you, just tell them, oh, that's all right. God just straightened you out. <laughs> hey, you're just getting the sin out. <laughs> so, I was raised, taught the same stupidity. So I remember as a child <clears throat> when I was praying for the Holy Ghost, and the word tarry just simply means wait. You see, we've been taught what is called tarry service, where you everybody's in there, G -G -G -Lord -G. They say that's it. They say you're tarrying. No, that's a prayer meeting. That's right. Tarry just simply means wait. That's all it means. Because we're in tarry, we're tarrying now. Yeah. What are we tarrying for? We're waiting for the coming of the Lord. Yeah. But you get what I'm talking about. Right. So I remember as a child, because I was taught, if you ain't spitting, you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> Man, I'd be on my knees down there praying, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. What I'd, I'd be looking around at folk, and I'd be like, Man, I can't get my spit to come up like other folk. <laughs> so listen, <laughs> I, I can look back at it now and laugh. So for me to feel like that I'm doing something, you know, I'll look around, make sure nobody ain't looking. I'll be like, <laughs> man, I'll be spitting all on my chair. And then sometime I would eat the spit to the tip of my mouth and make it hang and see who's watching. And then I'll just look around and just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> because I was taught if you ain't spitting, you ain't doing nothing. Do you see how good it is when your understanding come open? Amen. When you look back at how ignorant you are and now see your mind is starting to develop and learn the Bible, you can give God thanks oh, for yeah. having mercy on you to open your understanding. That's right. Because knowledge debunks ignorance. Knowledge debunks ignorance. Never get to a point you look at how old you are and think you know everything. Because as long as we live, there's room for growth, Amen. knowledge, and more knowledge. That's right. Listen. Let the wicked forsake. Give chapter and verse again, William. Still in Isaiah 55 and at verse 7. Everybody all right? Let the wicked forsake his way. And, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And, and let him return unto the Lord. Wait a minute. Obviously, you left them. Left them. Backslider. Mm -hmm. Backslider. Amen. Thousands of you are watching that once was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. 
once had the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, and you saw something go wrong in church, and you say, oh, man, I'm leaving church and going on in the world. Well, wait a minute. Nobody deeds in church should not determine whether you stay with God or leave. Did you hear what I said? Why, Pastor Jennings? Do things go wrong on your job? Oh, yeah. Do you walk off the job? Oh, no. Then why do you treat your job better than you treat your Lord? That's right. Well, I left the church because of the preacher. I left the church because of the organist. You didn't come for the organist. No. And you ain't come for the preacher. That's right. You're supposed to come for the word of God to save yourself. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. It says what? Let the wicked forsake his way. Leave your way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. Leave your unrighteous thoughts. Williams left his. Yes. He used to believe in three, now he believe in one. One, that's Thank right. God for Williams. You know, last week was his birthday. If you saw the telecast, we say happy yeah. birthday, William. He may not look it, but my brother's 60 years old. Amen. You know? So, we was sitting in the pulpit, and before it was time for me to preach, he was sitting in the pulpit, and Williams always would shake his finger in my face to get me told. He said, uh oh, oh. He said, he said, you know what day this is? He said, you know what I am today? I said, no, what? He said, I'm your elder. <laughs> Amen. So when it came time for me to preach, I said happy birthday to him. And, and there's hundreds of greetings over the internet saying happy birthday to you. Hundreds Wonderful. of them. Wonderful. Saying, saying happy birthday to you. Amen. Anyway. <laughs> sitting in the pulpit when we mentioned it, and I told the church what he said. He said, yes, Elder Williams. He said, we, he said introduce me, Elder Williams. <laughs> All right, come on, Elder Williams. Amen. Come on. You see how happy he is? <laughs> come on, Williams. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the wicked forsake his way. That goes for you too, Elder Williams. <laughs> forsake his way. And the unrighteous and man. And the unrighteous man. His thoughts. Listen. All of us have thoughts that we should not have. Amen. There's not a person in here, including me. I don't do like other preachers try to put myself above the word. I'm in that word just like you. That's right. And all of us got thoughts that we got to get rid of. Oh, yeah. And because we don't want God to catch us or cut us off with the way sometimes we think. That's right. Because sometimes meeting some people make you want to do something to them. Amen. And Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. There's sometimes, brother, people want, they make you want to do something. Amen. I mean, this is after you spoke in tongues. After. <laughs> after you spoke in tongue and yeah. after you shout. I want to paint a realistic picture of this holy way of God. Oh, yeah. If you walk around and think serving God is walking around grinning and smiling like you in the Cub Scouts or Girl Scouts <laughs> or right. Wee Blows, you's a fool. That's a fool. You see these blind infidels out there on the street giving you literature. You a Christian today? You a Christian today? You a Christian? They don't even know who Jesus is. That's true. Man, when you make it up in your mind to walk with God, a life of self-denial is a life of pain. Oh, yeah. And every time you get in mind to walk with God, the devil have a way of bringing people in your life yeah. that you try to get away from. That's right. Some of these people you haven't seen in 5, 10, 15 years. That's why I tell all followers of the truth of God, this <coughs> Facebook stuff is some of the most dangerous thing under the sun. That's true. I don't know how it works. I don't have Facebook. Many people have been pulling on me to get Facebook, and I tell them, here's my face, and William's got my book, and that's all I need. I just don't have the time and patience to sit on some computer all day and just chat to a bunch of infidels. And then all of a sudden, the one who you prayed for God to get rid of out of your life, 10 years later, how it works? Somebody pop up, a friend, and you don't know who it is? Friend request. And you don't know who it is, right? Until you log them. And there she is. You're like, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Up jumped the devil. Amen. Many things would not come in your life until you make it up in your mind to serve God. That's right. So when these preachers like T.D. Snakes and Creflo <laughs> O'Penny and Benny Hinn and others tell you Satan don't have no power, you done lost your mind. That's a lie. If he didn't have no power, how could he cause war in heaven? That's right. And a whole third of the angels took sides with Satan yeah. 
and backslid and joined him to have war in heaven. That's right. Satan got plenty of power. Oh, yeah. I heard one preacher say to the people, God, Satan don't have no power unless you believe it. Listen, if your house on fire, you ain't got to believe it's burning. That's right. If your house is on fire, you want to stay there and don't believe it's burning like a fool, go ahead. Go ahead. Won't be for long when you're done coughing and gagging, you will run out of there and admit the house is burning. That's right. The devil got plenty of power. Don't you feel him? Oh, yes. Don't he bother you? Oh, yeah. The part of the human body that Satan bothered the most is not your flesh. Yeah. He bothered the mind, mind because the flesh take a break and rest. But sometimes Satan dive into your subconscious mind even when you sleep. And yeah. next thing you know, you commit adultery in your sleep. In your sleep. You meet a man you ain't never met in your life. You met a woman or women. That's right. That's right. You ain't never met in your life. That's right. Young sister trying to abstain. All of a sudden, she meets someone. She think he's a Greek goddess. <laughs> Come to her in a dream. Hair just blowing. <laughs> and she commit fornication. Well, Pastor Jennings, when I have dreams like this, do am I supposed to sin? What do they do to me? The book of Jude. In Jude 1 and at verse 8. Jude chapter 1 and Follow verse 8. Follow me in your Bible. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I got Bible for everything. everything. I just got to give it to you. Right. Some folk, I remember one woman came to me after service. She said, I mean no disrespect, <laughs> but you got a hard preacher. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, you was, Williams was reading so many scriptures, and I followed him in the Bible, and every scripture was hitting me. I just closed my Bible up and threw it down. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but why did you do that? She said, she shook at me, she put her hands on her hip. She said, honey, I was <laughs> scared that I was going to see some more of myself in there. <laughs> Remember what we said earlier, the scriptures is a mirror. Yeah. And you must accept what you see about yourself. Self-honesty, be brutally honest right. with yourself. That's right. You must call a spade a spade even when it hurts your character and hurts yourself. That's right. Listen. Jude chapter 1 and at verse 8. Let's get our dreams. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Amen. Read on. Despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Yet filthy, my, filthy, dreamers. filthy dreamers. They do what? Defile the flesh. Defile. That's why if you ever have a, you see quiet again? <laughs> if you ever have a filthy, dirty dream. You ever had a dream, somebody woke you up, and you got angry with them? You know, because they cut that dream off too short. And you're like, what you waking me up for? And you literally laid down to try to pick your dream back up like a movie. <laughs> huh? You laid back down and try to start that thing over. Turn. You hate the sun came up. You put the colors over your head, squinching your eyes. And all the time, could have been fornicating, committing adultery, or doing the things in your dream that you're not doing now, like smoking, smoking weed, gambling, snorting cocaine. Even though it's a dream, if the book said the wages of sin is death, a dream is dangerous because you can be lowered into the actual physical act That's right. through the dream. That's right. So sometimes a dream is an invitation to do what you've never done or to go back and do what God brought you out from or to hold on to what you're trying to let go and presently struggling with. That's right. Are you listening? Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. When the thing is defiled, that means it's in sin. That's right. That's right. Man, you can have such a bad beef with someone, you dream, you killed them. Wow. How many can bear witness to that? There are some people, man, I mean, you don't have such a run-in with them, and you're like, you know what, Lord, 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 I'm not, I'm not going there. And the book says a dream comes through the multitude of business. business. So as a result of having this run-in with him or her, you went to bed angry, and man, you had a dream that you wore, either drove by their house and threw a bomb, or went up to them, bow, 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 and you laughing. <laughs> 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 you <know? laughs> like, like you done lost your mind. But as a, as a result, as 
Yeah. Your flesh is what? Defiled. Because Foul. when you are defiled mentally, it calls your flesh to sin even subconsciously. Like you can dream you with a woman, and then you wake up and spill seed in your bed. That's yeah. right. Filthy dreamers. What? Filthy dreamers. What? Filthy dreamers. Good dreamers. Filthy dreamers. No, good dreamers. Filthy dreamers. No, good time dreamers. Filthy dreamers. Good time dreamers. Filthy dreamers. What does it do to you? Defile the flesh. When the thing is defiled, it's in sin. Are we learning today? Back to the fourth chapter of 1 Timothy. Back in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1. Yes. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. You know the Spirit brings this. Oh, yeah. Well, I wouldn't care what you dream. I wouldn't care if your dream was Mr. Potato Head. What would I care? That's right. But, brother, the foulment of any form mm. is sin. Yeah. It is written, all unrighteousness is what? Sin. sin. This is why one must pray and fast. I often teach this. Many of us have a tendency of praying for God to make us stronger. Mm. Now, in most cases, when many people ask God to make them stronger, they're just talking about either physical strength or spiritual sin, strength. Yeah. Let us remember there are several dynamics of the human being. Mind, soul, body, spirit. So when you pray and ask God for strength, a strong body but a weak mind don't help you none. No. That's why the Bible says, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. That's right. So when you pray and ask God for strength, you're going to be strong, one, mentally, two, emotionally. It's important that a man and a woman is emotionally strong, sound, stable. That way your heart is not every place and you're attracted to everybody. That's right. And you won't accept the proposal of everything. Yeah. And you won't be in love with 30 women. Amen. And you won't fall in love with eight men. That's right. Because you have emotional stability. That's right. So you pray for strength and stability mentally, emotionally, because when the mind is stable and the heart is stable, it will stabilize your temper, which is your body. Yeah. And you want your spirit to be stable. That way you don't run after everything that sounds like truth, but it is not truth. That's right. For Solomon said, there is a way that seems right Seems. unto man and the end thereof all the ways of death. Listen. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. In the last days. That in the latter days, some that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. This are the, these are the last days now, and yeah. people are leaving God by the thousands. Mm -hmm. And what's causing them to do it, William? Giving heed to seducing spirits. Somebody tricked you. Someone seduced you. Mm -hmm. and Brother, you got so close to that woman, so that woman pulled you out the church. <clears throat> That's right. She hugged you too tight. That's right. She jumped on you too often. Yeah. She gave you too much of her body. Right. Until she came in and shouted right out the church and pulled you right, right out with it. Amen. You remember the old cartoon you used to watch when someone cooking and the smell is in the air and mm -hmm. they float in the air? Yeah. That's exactly the way some women done some brothers. And that's exactly the way some brothers done some sisters. That's right. Some sisters was doing good until you met him. Yeah. Some brothers was doing good until you met her. That's right. Jezebel now pulled you out that's right. and Absalom came along and pulled you out. Pulled you out. Listen. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That what? That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed what? Giving heed to seducing spirits. A seducing spirit. Here is someone in the truth, but yet got a seducing spirit will try to pull you to the side, away from the church, to debunk the truth. That's right. And tell you, man, you ain't got to believe that. You ain't got to believe this. And when you're weak and mentally and emotionally unstable, mm -hmm. you start getting under the wing of a beginner. Right. Getting under the wing of an amateur That's right. who don't even know God. That's right. And then they manipulate you and con you and trick right. you and pull you right out of the faith. And then you end up going to hell with him or with her. Right. Let us understand something. Nobody is worth going to hell for or with. No. And I mean nobody. Nobody. Listen. Giving heed to seducing spirits. And what? And doctrines of devils. Give me Acts 2.42, Acts and then we want to alternate. Mm -hmm. I want you to pay attention to the language of the scripture that he read, doctrine of, of devils. devils. All right, give me another doctrine. Acts chapter, 2 and verse 40, Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. Come on. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' the doctrine. The apostles' doctrine is the teaching of Jesus. Right. The apostles' doctrine is the teaching of Jesus. That's 
doctrine. So you have the apostles' doctrine and, and doctrines of devils. And you got the devil's doctrine. That's now right. the devil's doctrine clash with the apostles' doctrine, but being that Satan is a serpent, he borrowed from some of the apostles' doctrine and blended with the devil's doctrine, and now he manipulated and mixed it up so good you can't tell the devil's doctrine from the apostles' doctrine. Right. To make a better example, if somebody wants to destroy you, they can make a good salad and then put some type of poison or, 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 or rat droppings in you think it's little plump peppers. That's right. And dilute the poison with the sweetness of the salad. That's right. That's the way false prophets do. They dwindle down the lie and camouflage it by reading scripture. And when you lack the understanding of the scripture, you can't see the lie that's hiding. That's right. That's why I thank God for the truth of God. Amen. When they put that lie, then try to put scripture on it, we get the crowbar of the Bible. No, you don't. We Put it under that line, work it up, work it up, and then they keep trying to press it down, but then we rip all the bolts out of it. That's right. That's right. Let truth rule. Yeah. I don't want to lie about nothing. Amen. Listen. And they continued steadfastly in, in the apostles. All right, go back to the book of uh, Timothy. Finish that up. Back in 1 Timothy 4 and still at verse 1. All right. Give it, now the Spirit speaketh expression. In the latter time, some shall the prophet of faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. Speaking lies. Wait a minute. What's in the doctrine of devils? Speaking lies. What's in the doctrine of devils? Lies. The doctrine of God said, I suffer not a woman and teach none the use of authority over the man. Mm -hmm. The doctrine of devil says women apostles, women bishops, first ladies, women can be missionaries, the preacher's wife is the assistant pastor, and all that garbage. Mm -hmm. Doctrine of devils. Doctrines of uh -huh. devils. Speaking lies. Speaking what? Lies. Uh -huh. Speaking lies. Deaconess. Lies. Women mm -hmm. deacons. Amen. Preachers, junior bishops, junior elders, junior pastors, yeah. junior apostles. Listen, you're not even a junior liar. You're just a liar. Just a liar. Speaking lies. Speaking lies. What else? In hypocrisy. They are hypocriting while they're lying, meaning they are liars and fakers at the same time. That's right. What else? Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Their conscience is seared with a hot iron, meaning this. They lie to you. It don't bother them. They trick you and scheme you. It don't bother them. That's right. They even tell you the Lord said it, and it don't bother them. That's right. Their conscience is seared with the hot iron, meaning they have no convictions about their wrong. Amen. If they send a thousand people to hell with them, they don't care. Don't care. As long as they can get all they want out of them. That's right. That's a dangerous man. That's right. That's a dangerous person. Yeah. You have no conscience. Your conscience is seared See. with the hot iron. You used to believe as one God. Now you denounce it and believe as two and three. Amen. Here you claim you received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. Now you say you don't have to speak. Mm. Here the Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now you say you got a revelation, flesh is there, and you have no conscience? Amen. Conscience seared. Your conscience is seared. With a hot iron. You know when a thing is seared, it's like it's welded together. Yeah. Seared. Seared. Don't want to move. Mm -hmm. Who seared it? Satan did. That's right. And you work for him with great commitment and loyalty. That's right. And Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And? Forbidding to marry. Wait a minute. That's one of the devil's doctrines. Mm -hmm. Forbidding to marry. That's one of the devil's doctrines. I want all the Catholics to hear this. Amen. Forbidding to marry. That's in the devil's teaching. That's right. That's in the Catholic Church. That's right. The Catholics say in order to be a good priest, you got to be celibate. Mm -hmm. Peter was a good apostle. He wasn't celibate. That's right. According to the Bible, Peter was a married man Amen. because the Bible says how Jesus healed his mother-in-law. Right. You don't get a mother-in-law by crocheting. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you got to marry somebody. Amen. Do you get what I'm telling you? Forbidding to marry. Forbidding to marry. That's the devil's doctrine. And this is why the priest can't sustain. Mm -hmm. Because they're being forced to do something that God didn't tell them to do. That's right. God tell a man to leave father and mother cleave and him. cleave to his wife. Not cleave to the altar boy. Not cleave to the priest. Not cleave to a man. Listen. Listen, Dallas. 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 <laughs> That's right. I didn't know y'all had so many gays down here Amen. in your city. Amen. <laughs> the LGBT keep adding letters to their yeah. uh, organization. Yeah. It used to be LGB and LGBT. Now it's LGBTQ Q. and, uh, and LGBTQAOU. Sometime why? <laughs> 
and then trying to say that being gay is equal to the black agenda. Amen. The homosexual community is fighting for a behavior to justify a behavior. We ain't fighting for a behavior. No. You are fighting for economic equality and justice and equality by law. That's right. God's law said he made the woman for the man. Amen. I'm so glad. Amen. So glad about it. I got that. Let, let me just do like the false prophets. I'm so happy <laughs> that God did not make a man for a man. No. If God made man for men, where would the, where would the babies come from? That's right. And it'd be a whole church of switching men. Yeah. When I yell, hoorah, it wouldn't even come out strong. That's right. The minute just said, hoorah. <laughs> 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 They're like a little, you know, a little water gun. Water gun. Hallelujah. But you sick men and women. You women that say, I got homosexuals as friends. Mm -hmm. They human. Yes, they are human. That's why God speak against their behavior. That's right. Dogs have more intelligence. A male dog don't mount up on a male dog. No. When two male dogs see each other, they look. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right. But when that male dog see a female dog, his walk changed. Walk changed. <laughs> Am I right, I said? Go ahead. <laughs> his Go whole walk changed. That's right. <laughs> Why? There's an intelligence in him. Right. That the Lord of the world has put in him. That's right. Hallelujah. I come down here to Dallas and hang out, hang out with my Dallas brothers. Mm -hmm. And if we walk in the streets and some men walk by, I don't want to, I want, what would I look like seeing my brothers be like, oh, that's that. Oh, mm. oh, Lord, please, Lord, help me. Hallelujah. Mm. You know, you in bad shape. Sin is wrong, is it not? Amen. Sin is wrong, isn't it? Amen. But we are in bad shape. When you can't do wrong, right. Right. Did you understand what I just said? Someone said it's not a right way to do wrong. It's a right way to do everything. Right. How many here used to drink that quart of liquor hanging out on the corner with their balls? Hang, raise your hand. So when you drunk your liquor, did you drink the bottle with the cap on it? You took it off, correct? Took it off. So you got drunk. Right, even though drinking was wrong. That's right. You mean to tell me you don't even know how to fornicate? <laughs> fornication is wrong. Right. But fornication was not made for two men. No. Someone said, well, prove it. Seventh chapter mm, of 1 Corinthians. Corinthians. First Corinthians. And begin seven. at verse 1. At verse 1. Listen. Now concerning the things wherever you wrote unto concerning me. Concerning the things that you wrote unto me. It is good for a man. It's good for a man. Not to touch a woman. Not to touch a woman. Ne nevertheless. Nevertheless. To avoid fornication. To avoid fornication. That, what was the recommendation of God? That every man. That every man. Have his own wife. Have his own man. Ha have his own wife. What? Amen. Have his own what? Let every man have his own wife. Own man. Own wife. Own wife. Every man. Let every man have his own wife. I married a woman. That's right. When I was 14 years old and saw that young girl jumping rope. <laughs> I remember what she had on to this day. White t-shirt. White shorts with blue piping, and from under the shorts was all legs. <laughs> Jumping rope. You know how you women used to do? Jack the number, Jack the quick, Jack the. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember we dropped my cousin off who lived next door to her. When I got out the car, 
seemed like everything went in slow motion. She was jumping rope. <laughs> and everything was in slow motion. <laughs> Now, if there was a dude was out a dude. there working out, I'm getting out the car and getting in it. I don't know you exist. That's right. That's right. Not even a double take. That's right. No, sir. Isn't it amazing mm. how the gay rights can push their agenda all through Congress? Yeah. And here's people of color can't even get rights for hardly anything. That's right. We're living in a sick society who think there's nothing wrong with a judge. And I want to say to every judge mm -hmm. and every preacher who marry two men to each other or two women to each other, yeah. you're going to go to hell for it. For that. That's right. You're going to go to hell for it. That's right. And I want to say to every two men mm -hmm. and every two women yeah. who think you're married because you got a license, you ain't married. No. You're just two fornicators that's, all. that's committing abomination. That's all. That's all. Are you listening? That's right. The word of God says what? Now concerning the things wherever you wrote unto me. Let what? It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Yes. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Let every man. Let every man have his own wife. And? And let every woman have her own husband. They got both of them, didn't they? Both of them. So we're doing all right. Amen. All right, let's go back to where we were real quick. Back in 1 Timothy chapter 4, we're at verse 3. Yes. Forbidding to marry. That's part of that Catholic teaching, forbidding to marry. And? And commanding to abstain from meats can't eat certain meat. Well, in the Old Testament, you couldn't eat pork. You couldn't eat shellfish. In the Old Testament. So I said, well, Pastor Jennings, I, if I eat pork, I get lightheaded. Okay, well, if eating pork, if you get pork or beef or certain fish, if that don't agree with your body, don't eat it. But pray over it. There may be, one scripture talk about if meat offend your brother, then don't eat it. But if thy brother be grieved, Listen. now in the book of Romans chapter 14 and at verse 15. This is the New Testament dietary law. That's right. Follow me. But if thy brother, but if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitable. Mm -hmm. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Now, if I don't know Brother Campbell don't eat a certain fish, and yet he come to my house for dinner and I serve that fish, so I don't offend him if he say, well, look, brother, I don't eat that kind of fish. My love for him will remove it. That's right. Not tell him, you're going to eat it anyway or starve. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm telling you? That's right. Yeah. Listen. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat. If your brother be grieved with your meat. Now walkest thou not charitable. You don't walk with love. Destroy not him don't with thy him meat. destroy him with your meat. For whom Christ died. Yes. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. Yeah. For the kingdom of God is not meat Let's and drink. All of you that's arguing over meat and all that stuff, <laughs> the kingdom of God is not built on bacon, no, eggs, no. chicken. The kingdom of God ain't built on that stuff. For the kingdom of God is not meat the and drink. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. But righteousness. But it's living right. And peace. And peace. And joy in the Holy Ghost. And Lord. joy in God. For he that in these things serveth Christ. He that do what? For he that in these things serveth Christ yes. is acceptable to God. Now the Bible went on to say how one esteem, mm -hmm. one day alike. Now in the book of Romans chapter I 14. I want this to be good for you that are writing me right. and say you have church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we have church, well we had church last night on last Saturday. Night. Right. And then after that I want to see where Paul got it on the first day of the week. That's right. And the first day of the week is not Saturday. Right. So we believe in having church anytime. Mm -hmm. Because God is too good to narrow him down to one day. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. All right, let's get this now, and first, then we'll get Brother Paul after. First in Romans chapter 14, we're at verse 5. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Give chapter and verse again. Romans chapter 14, we'll start at verse 1. All right, do that. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputation. Wait a minute. If someone is weak in the faith, accept them. Receive ye. But not into doubtful disputations. I mean, don't accept them and then want to argue with them. That's right. Because a lot of things he don't know. That's right. Somebody coming to the knowledge of the truth for the first time, it's like a lot of women don't know that it's wrong to wear pants and shorts and all that, so they come to church. We don't mm -hmm. tell them you can't come in with that stuff. Right. I don't care if you got a cowl on your head. Come on in here. <laughs> if, a, if, a, if a homosexual come in, let them in. 
In fact, put him in. on the front row. That's right. If a man come in just like a woman, let him come on in. Let him in. When the word of God get all up under that dress and strip it off of him. That's right. I bear witness. We had a service in Harrisburg, and there was a man came dressed like a woman. And he was known in Harrisburg as being a cross dresser. I didn't know it. When I asked he wanted to be baptized, he stood up, but he looked like she. <laughs> but when he went in the dressing room, mm -hmm. he put off all his woman clothes, and she went in, but he came out. Amen. And when he went down in water, he laid aside that lifestyle and said he hasn't picked it up since. Wonderful. That's why I tell parents, when you see your sons trying on your mother clothes, don't you say that's cute. You better stop it right away. Oh, yeah. Your little son, get your pocketbook and get your heels and put your hat on. You take a picture of him. Like he like a little miniaturized queer. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Amen. Now you television stations, don't bleep out queer. The queers <laughs> use it. That's one of the letters in the lineup. The L G P something Q. Q. I'm using the Q part. The Q part. <laughs> I'm using the Q part. That's right. Listen. For one believeth that he may eat all things. One believe he can eat everything. Another who is weak eateth Another herbs. Another who is weak, they are herbless. They just eat herbs. They don't eat meat. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth don't not. Don't let the one that eat anything despise the one that don't eat certain things. And let not him which eateth Let not eateth him not. which eateth eateth not. Judge him that eateth. You judge the one that eat. For God hath received God him. God received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? Do you hear this? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yeah. Yea, he shall be holding up. Uh -huh. For God is able to make him stand. All right. One man. One man. Esteemeth one day above another. Now. You that have church on Saturday or go to the service on Saturday, go ahead. Go ahead. We have service on some Saturdays ourselves. That's right. There's no argument with us. We don't tell folk you'll go to hell for having church on Saturday. How stupid does that sound? That's right. We believe in worshiping God any day and every day. That's right. Well, if you have church on Sunday, you wish up the God of the sun. Mm. You know what? You're right. I do wish up the God of the sun, and Christ is he. <laughs> That's right. Right. Our son, God, didn't only make the sun. He made the moon and the stars. That's right. He made the sea and all things therein. That's right. Who is it? Jehovah. Jehovah. Who is it? Elohim. Who is it? I am that I am. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. We don't wish up a goddess. No. We wish up God. God. And they that wish up him, him must wish up him in spirit and in truth. Right. Amen. So you have service on Saturday. Does mm. that mean you wish up Saturn? <laughs> Does that mean you wish up the planet Saturn? No. Or do you wish up the God that made Saturn? That's right. Saturn. You fool and infidel and unbeliever. Amen. Do you hear what the Bible says? One man esteemeth one day above another. Yes. Yeah, so Un you that have service on Saturday, go ahead. You oh, don't get yeah. no argument out of us. No. I preach for anybody on Saturday. I do it on Friday. I do it on Thursday. I even back up to Wednesday and Tuesday. I even knock you out on Monday and come back again and floor you on Sunday. That's right. Uh-huh. One man esteemeth one day above another. One day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. That's the way I am. That's I right. esteem every day alike. alike. God is just good on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. He's That's the right. same God. He's the same yesterday and today and forevermore. And his mercy endure forever. That's right. All right? Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. You be persuaded in your own mind. I wouldn't dare argue with a person about what day to serve God. No. I believe that God should be wished up every day according to the first chapter, the I believe, of the book of, Luke. the book of Luke. Let's read that quickly, begin at verse 71, so I can knock off, son. Amen. Come on, son. Luke chapter 1, and we'll start. At verse 70. At verse 70. Yes. <clears throat> Luke chapter 1, we're at verse 70. Come on. 
Luke 1 and verse 70. Uh -huh. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, yes. which have been since the world began, uh -huh. that we should be saved from our enemies yes. and from the hand of all them that hate us. What is it? To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Yes. The oath which he swore. oath which he swore to our father Abraham. That he would grant unto us uh -huh. that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies. What should we do, William? Might serve him without fear. Wait a minute. Serve them. Him. Serve two of them. Might serve him. You see, the holiness always points you to one. That's right. Always point you to one. That's right. I want you to read to the world how often mm -hmm. should we serve Jehovah, which is the Him. Luke 1 and at verse 75. That's right. In holiness. No, I, we should serve Him in Baptist. In holiness. Might serve Him without fear in holiness. No, 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 no. In Methodist. Might serve Him without fear in holiness. Serve Him without fear in Apostolic. In holiness. In Pentecostal. In holiness. In Mormon. In holiness. I can get you wherever you go. That's right. Everything just keep pointing to him and holiness. That's right. What is it? Might serve him without fear in holiness. How often, William? And righteousness before him. How often? All the days of our life. Yeah. Amen. How often? All the days of our life. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Amen. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. How often? All the days of our life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Remember what the word of God says. Now the spirit speaketh expressly. First Timothy. Chapter 4 and verse 1. The spirit is expressing itself today. Hallelujah. That Hallelujah. in the latter times some shall Hallelujah. depart Hallelujah. from the faith. And I want to say to all of you that Hallelujah. are here, the faith of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. is holiness. Yeah. Yeah. That lets you know anything else you have and it's not holiness. You got something that a man gave you, That's right. and you've been lied to. That's right. Your mama was lied to. Your father was lied to. They gave money to support organizations for years. They support a lie, and many didn't know it. That's right. But the bed is too narrow. Yeah. Covers too short. Oh, yeah. Lord, I take God. We're gonna expose all the unrighteousness under the sun. Let's close out with Acts 2.38. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Dallas, it's that time again. Amen. You know you a sinner. Who, Pastor Jennings? You. You that are Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, all of you was baptized wrong because Amen. I know how they baptize. So-called Pentecostals, you was baptized wrong. I know how they baptized. Mm -hmm. You might as well get yourself ready on God terms That's now. Right. That's right. You that bow your head and raise your hands, you're not saved. Mm -hmm. Your arms and head ought to be tired with your hands up all that long time. <laughs> Praying the sinner's prayer, no such prayers in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You got to repent of your repent. devilment, Mr. Man and Miss Woman. That's right. And be baptized who? Every one of you. How much? Every one of you. I got every race under the sun. That's right. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ is the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's right. When Jesus said baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost wasn't called in Matthew 20 19. No. Matthew 20 19 was fulfilled, meaning it was done. It was act out. In Acts 2 38. That's right. So you that been baptized, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you wet. Mm -hmm. You ain't baptized. You just got wet. Yeah. You're a wet sinner. Yeah. What, you, what I gotta do, Pastor? You gotta go back in water. Go back. And get it right. That's right. It's still dirty. Yeah. Well, my bishop did it. You got a dirty bishop. <laughs> Amen. Repent and be baptized. Yeah, I don't care if you're a pastor today. Right. If you've been baptized, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you're a sinner leading people. That's right. Your sins have never been washed away. Right. Now, how in the world you claim you love Jesus and yet fight his name in baptism? Amen. You don't love Jesus. You're a liar. That's right. The Bible says repent. Be sorry for being of the devil. <laughs> Ask God to forgive you. Yeah. Dallas, mm -hmm. Dallas, Dallas, and all of you that are watching around the world, someone made a comment from Chile. From South America, action. When, when are you coming here, Pastor Jennings? We down here in Chile. We want to be baptized. Lord. They, they just, they're just reaching out from all over. Wonderful. Want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, they, they, they reached me from Poland. Mm. 
want to be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ, they reached us from Scotland. Want to be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ, from Honduras. I got a text today from one of my ministers out of California, a place down in Mexico, begging for baptism. I told him to contact the minister in Florida, Minister Abraham. He'll make arrangements to go to Mexico to baptize them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Got an email from an Indian reservation out of Mexico. Said we watch you every week. Would you please come and baptize us? And I believe from the Navajo tribe. We want to be baptized. Hallelujah. Want to be baptized. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This God, God said, I make his apostles fishers of men. And look at the different nationalities that God is catching. That's right. Black, white, brown, red, Asian. I don't care who you are. Of what nationality you are. Mm -hmm. This message is for you. Yes. Dallas, if you don't want to go to hell and you want to be right and you mean business with God, yeah. if you want to be baptized the right way in the name of Jesus Christ today, stand on your feet. Get it why I'm here. Stand on your feet if you want the right baptism. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet, Dallas. Come on. Hallelujah. You don't want to be right, stand on your feet. Hallelujah. All of you that are standing, go to the back there. All of you that are standing, go to the back. Look at all these soldiers, all these wonderful soldiers. men and women want to get their life right with God. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Bless the name of God. Hallelujah. Last night we baptized 80. I know we done got over the 100 mark now. Yeah. Undoubtedly we're over the 100 mark now. Amen. Only the Holy Ghost can do something like this. Hallelujah. Repent. Repent and be baptized. You ain't born again bowing your head and raising your hand. You ain't born again. No. Many people have never saw nothing like this in their life. Amen. In a wicked time like this, men and women is running to this. That's right. And it's not cotton candy. That's right. It's not easy. It's tough. Tough. Looks beautiful to see white brothers, Spanish brothers, black brothers, brown brothers. When that Spanish brother come through speaking in tongue, he ain't speaking his language. That's right. I'm able to tell the difference between another tongue and that Hispanic language. That's right. Huh? That's right. When that Spanish brother come through speaking in tongue, he come through in another language. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Speaking in another tongue as the tongue. Spirit of God give utterance. That's right. You know, this is the best thing that ever hit the planet. Oh, yes. Because it's the same thing that Jesus gave his apostles. That's right. Who give me the correct time, brothers? Hallelujah. Come on, brothers. Give me the correct time quickly, please. 228. All right. We'll be back at 5 o'clock. We'll let you break. Go get something to eat. Come on back so we can kill you this evening. <laughs> Dallas, look out for the announcement. We're going to do here, just like we've done in Houston, God willing. We're going to find a place. Amen. We're going to find a place to start getting you rolling. Wisconsin, I ain't forgot about you. I got to get you, too. Chicago, I ain't forgot about you. I got to get you, too. We're supposed to be in spring, uh, I blame it, Springfield, Massachusetts. I believe it is. We got to go there. Missouri. I got your letters. We'll be there in St. Louis. Mm. Amen. Louisville, Kentucky, Muhammad Ali town. We'll be there to hit you from the earth and from the heavens. <laughs> we'll be there to jab you with the word. Hallelujah. Put you little, you lean up against your false doctrine and just, just jab it to you. <laughs> we'll be there. Amen. God willing, Kentucky. God willing, we'll be there. God be our helper. We got a four-city tour coming up next year in Ohio. We'll be in Cleveland and Columbus and... Uh, what is it? Cincinnati. Cincinnati, and I believe it's Daytona. <laughs> yes, I'm supposed to be in Little Rock next year, and I'm supposed to be in Phoenix, Arizona in December. Yeah. So Little Rock, I'm coming to break all your rocks up. <laughs> yes, God willing, Little Rock. I want Little Rock to bring the little preachers <laughs> so I can hit them with a big hammer. Amen. My name is Veronica Burst, and I'm from all over the United States. My father's a military, and I'm staying in Dallas, Texas. And thank you. My name is Natalie Bryan. I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana, but I live here in Dallas, Texas. 
I think that um, it was very excellent, and I love Gina. I didn't, I was watching him at first, and I shed it off. I'm like, oh, wow, this man is too bold. And I had to look him up on the Internet because I'm like, is this man still alive for him to say the things what he say? But I looked him up, and I've been watching him for six months. And I had got out of the church. I've been out of church for for a year. So I haven't been back to no church. I've been listening to this. This will be my church forever, forever. And I will be, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I was baptized wrong, but I will be baptized in the name of Jesus. Yes. I'm a follower. I've been following for about a year. Um, I was baptized incorrectly, um, but I always said after following and listening to his teachings that if they ever came to Dallas, I want to be baptized correctly. I'm not sure if there's a church here yet. Okay, as soon as it is, there will be my church home. But I was delighted. I enjoyed the service. Everything that he teaches you, he can show it to you in the Word. Every question that I had in my mind about different ministries and churches when I started to follow him, God put it in him to give me the word and the scriptures to answer every question and doubt that I had when it came to ministry. So I was truly blessed today, and I've been blessed ever since I've been following his teachings. I'm grateful. I'm very, very grateful. And I'm grateful just standing up here and just to hear the word of God. I just want to encourage him and the rest of the followers, ministers that he have that are in the ministry, keep up the good work and continue to fight the good fight of faith. We'll continue to pray for you all, and God bless y'all. Hello, my name is Marquell Woods. I'm from Wichita, Kansas. Uh, I came across Geno Jennings about five years ago, and I haven't dropped my phone since. Um, I thank God for his obedience and, and how God uses him to for real tell the truth to people across the world about God. And um, me, I'm a truth seeker, so I've been turned off of a lot of churches, a lot of people who don't represent God correctly, don't represent his word correctly. But when I first heard Geno Jennings, I was hooked. And not only Geno Gen Jennings and happy belated birthday to um, uh, Pastor Williams, uh, but, but them two together, it, it literally changed my life. And I'm not perfect, but I'm still striving to be perfect. And I know I'm building my foundation as a young man um, to get closer to God. And I thank you, Pastor Jennings, for being such a blessing to my life, sir. It's just the, be it's just the beginning. I don't expect to be perfect once the baptism is, is done, but at least I know uh, I'll have the right, I'm in, the, I'm in a, the right direction to have it, to get closer to God and represent God the way that I want to with my daughters and everything like that. So I'm very, very blessed to be here, to see him in person. I drove all the way from Wichita, Kansas, just to be here and actually experience him in person and me having him off of my phone and actually seeing him and the rest of the congregation and seeing them say, mm-hmm, and, uh, you know, uh, it was just a complete blessing, complete blessing. It was worth every mile that I drove to be here. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and uh, follow God. Uh, uh, follow any man of God. Follow people. At least follow Geno Jennings because he's going to give you the, the, the scriptural facts about God and what God represents, um, just God in general. So, I mean, just follow Geno Jennings and, and you'll truly be blessed. And don't, and don't listen to how he sounds. Listen to what comes out of his mouth, which is vitally important. You're not going to hear that from no other pastor in the world. Greatest telecast in the world, period. And don't be fooled by men. Because men, they're full of liars. Of course, preachers are very, very important. That's why Geno Jennings is very significant because he not only backs up things like homosexuality and second, ma uh, second wives and um, uh, fornication, adultery, but uh, he also gives examples of what man condones and what God don't condone. And nobody wants to hear the truth, and it's a hard pill to swallow, but at the same time, we... we we got to hear it. We, it we, this has to be done. I found out um, from Pastor Jennings, my mom actually watches him on YouTube. So um, throughout every Sunday morning, I'll watch him along with her. He's very encouraging, very inspiring. This is my first time actually being here. Uh, my mom told me that he came to Dallas, was coming to Dallas. So being along with her and coming here with my family as well, it was really nice to actually see him speak in person. So I really enjoyed it. My parents, my mom and dad, and my brother and sister, they're actually going to get baptized today. Um, they've been baptized before, but they want to be renewed. So I really, I'm really happy for them that they're doing that.
I suggest that everyone out here, out there who's ever listening around the world just listen to Pastor Jennings because he's a very inspiring minister and pastor, and you can learn a lot from him. Repent, Dallas. Mm -hmm. Repent. Repent and be baptized. Who? Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, if you want to be right with God and don't want to go to hell, and for once in your life, want to obey the Bible and get it right. Get it right. If you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and get it right, yeah. Dallas, stand on your feet if you want to be baptized. Stand on your feet, Dallas. Stand on your feet, Dallas. Dallas, stand on your feet if you want to be baptized. Stand on your feet, Dallas. Stand on your feet, Dallas. Stand on your feet if you want to be baptized. Stand on your feet, Dallas. Stand on your feet, Dallas. Dallas, stand on your feet if you want to be baptized. Stand on your feet, Dallas. Stand on your feet, Dallas.